Recently, we looked at how the latest RTX 4060 Ti compares against the beast of a GPU from a few generations ago, the RTX 2080 Ti. It was pretty clear which came out as the winner due to the fact that you can pick up a used one for about $293. And because that's still lower than the $299 asking price of the RTX 4060 non-TI, we thought it was only fair to see how they compare, and if wanting to spend up to $300 on a GPU, what you should actually go for in 2023. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. I'm never gonna be an esports gamer, I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son, it is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. Now, I don't want to bore you with facts, figures, and specs, because we all know by now that the 4060, along with both models of 4060 Ti, have a serious issue when it comes to being throttled by the lack of VRAM, the extremely narrow memory bus, and a consequent lower memory bandwidth. The 2080 Ti, however, which still uses GDDR6, manages to pack a much higher memory interface and has tons of bandwidth to really allow that memory to stretch its legs something that should be pretty clear to see in games that utilize a lot more VRAM. Now, while Nvidia believe they have the answer with an increased L2 cache of a whopping 336% compared to the Turing-based GPU, this means, according to Nvidia, that the GPU is less likely to obtain data through the VRAM or even through the system memory. In practice, meaning that less VRAM is needed. Though, based on our content over the last few months, that's not strictly the case, and as seen the 4060 and 4060 Ti perform, well, quite lackluster. And AMD are in exactly the same boat with the RX 7600, meaning that the GPU releases this year have just overall been a bit of a letdown. Which brings us to today, where we're looking at a GPU that was essentially $999 at launch back in September of 2018. Though, as it is so old, scouring the likes of eBay will allow you to pick one up for around $293 on average. And that's what puts this matchup so competitive. Because firstly, I want to see if the 2080 Ti still has some life in it yet, and to see how the 4060 stacks up, or gets beaten down by. So to put this to the test, we put both GPUs on our GPU benchmarking system with an Intel Core i9-12900K and 32GB of Patriot Viper 6200MHz dual channel memory on an ASUS Maximus Z690 Hero motherboard. All of our testing was done on Windows 11, and we've tested a suite of 15 games in total, including some extra ones with ray tracing enabled to see how both cards do there in 2023. So with that out of the way, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. So starting things off with a Plague Tale Requiem on the Ultra preset, and at 1080p, the cheaper 2080 Ti already gets off to a flying start with a lead of 40% over the RTX 4060, while 1440p sees that lead increase slightly to 42%. So not looking great for the newer Ada Lovelace GPU, and we're only one game in so far. Moving on to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and the lead does shrink ever so slightly, though the 2080 Ti still commands a 14% margin over the RTX 4060 at 1080p, and a larger lead of 22% at 1440p, showing that the extra memory capabilities are really starting to make a big difference, especially at the higher resolution. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 shows a familiar story with the 2080 Ti, and therefore sees it come in 15% faster than the newer and more expensive RTX 4060 at 1080p, and then a wider 24% gap at 1440p, really highlighting the pretty lackluster GPU core, and more importantly, the limitations due to the memory bus, smaller memory count, and less bandwidth. Moving on to Control, and it's another win for the 2080 Ti by one of the largest margins we've seen. The older generation card pumps out 47% faster performance than the RTX 4060 at 1080p, and a somewhat laughable 62% at 1440p, now putting the RTX 4060 sub 60 frames per second. Enabling ray tracing sees scaling pretty much around the same when we look at the differences between the cards. At 1080p, the 2080 Ti still manages to pump out 44% more frames, and a still very impressive 47% at 1440p. The RTX 4060 takes such a battering here at just 36 FPS average, making it a pretty unpleasant experience to play, and the likes of upscaling technology like DLSS is a bit of a must to be able to get something that's actually playable and enjoyable. 
Unsurprisingly, the 4060 falls short in Cyberpunk, a game where memory really comes into play, as it sits 22% lower than the 2080 Ti at 1080p, and 33% slower at 1440p, now with a frame rate of sub 60fps. Again, not making for the best gameplay experience, and is better suited for 1080p gaming, though the 2080 Ti sits miles ahead there too. Enabling ray tracing takes quite a sizeable hit on both cards at both 1080 and 1440p, though the 2080 Ti still manages to produce 17% more frames at the lower resolution and a staggering 30% more at 1440p. Even with these gains, 1440p is pretty much out of the question when it comes to an enjoyable experience, and even at 1080p, you're really on the cusp of the lows dropping below 30, which is where you'd notice some pretty bad stuttering. Death Stranding on the very high preset has the RTX 2080 Ti almost hitting 200 FPS at 1080p, which puts it 28% faster than the RTX 4060, which sits at 155 FPS. Now as we move up to 1440p, that gap widens to 36%, further instilling the fact that the RTX 4060 doesn't offer much, if anything for its slightly higher cost of about $7 on average. So there's not much in it cost-wise, but the performance lost makes that gap even wider. Doom Eternal is another game that sees a large 25% lead to the 2080 Ti at 1080p and an even larger 32% margin at 1440p. Again, being a game that is so demanding in terms of VRAM usage, the RTX 4060 just really falls apart in comparison. Though the performance is still nothing to grumble at, but being beaten by a card that's many, many years older and now comes out cheaper is, well, somewhat embarrassing. Dying Light 2 on the high preset shows a strong 21% more performance from the older Turing based GPU, but 1440p is where we see the larger difference of 37% in favour to the 2080 Ti, with the RTX 4060 just falling short of that 60fps threshold that most gamers crave. Obviously some tweaking of the settings will unlock some more performance to boost above that, but when you can utilise the high preset on an older GPU and get another 22fps at the higher resolution, well, it's a bit of a no brainer. F122 showed impressive performance across the board with the 2080 Ti being 22% faster at 1080p on the high preset and a larger 26% faster at 1440p. Now while the numbers are very good on both cards and the overall gameplay experience will be fine on both, the 2080 Ti seems to be the better well-rounded card in this game, and the likes of 4K isn't completely out of the question. Moving on to Far Cry 6 where we see a similar 22% margin at 1080 on the Ultra preset, while that margin again increases thanks to the higher amount of cores and other key specs, along with the more free-flowing memory configuration to 33% at 1440p. A pretty typical lead that we've seen throughout most of the games we've tested. Hogwarts Legacy sees some of the worst comparative data margins that we've seen so far, as the 2080 Ti leads against the RTX 4060 by 47% at 1080p and a mammoth 66% at 1440p. Being such a new game, you as a gamer would expect the newer architecture card to draw the distance a little bit better, but the RTX 4060 just suffers very badly against the card from nearly 5 years ago. Horizon Zero Dawn sees an interesting result where the 2080 Ti comes in 26% faster at 1080p on the ultimate quality preset, while that lead grows to 37% at 1440p, now seeing the 2080 Ti coming in with identical figures at 1440p to what the RTX 4060 did at 1080p. Spider-Man is another fairly new game, so you'd expect the gap to close in between the older 2080 Ti and newer RTX 4060, but it's another blow to the newer cars, as the 2080 Ti comes in 17% faster at 1080p and packs another 59% performance at 1440p, still hitting 131 frames per second, again with scope for being able to play pretty well at 4K. Enabling the ray tracing option, we now see the margin narrow, though the 2080 Ti still comes in 14% faster at 1080p and 24% faster at 4K. While I don't want to focus too much on the cost side of things because there is only $7 between them, even at the same price point this isn't great for the 4060 Ti, with the only thing going for it being the fact that you can buy it new and with a warranty compared to the 2080 Ti which would have to be bought used. Moving over to Microsoft Flight Sim and we have our first win for the 4060, seeing the 2080 Ti come in 2% slower at 1080p. Though, looking at the results, it's clear to see that this is a CPU limitation through bottlenecking, and retesting would see this 1fps lead move around, so really can be put down as margin of error. As we move up to 1440p, the RTX 4060 struggles and drops down to 39fps on average, with the 2080 Ti coming in 33% faster at 52. 
Pairing this with an X3D CPU would garner more performance, or the saving grace for the 4060 being DLSS3, which would see the performance propel forward by quite some bit of both resolutions, something that the 2080 Ti doesn't have. Then in our last game, Watch Dogs Legion, it's another clear cut victory to the 2080 Ti with 28% faster performance at 1080p and a larger 36% more at 1440p, which also puts the RTX 4060 just below that 60 FPS threshold. Though dropping the quality settings would see that increase and lead to a more fluid gameplay experience. Enabling ray tracing sees performance drop as expected, with the 2080 Ti at 1080p the only scenario that I would consider, let's say, playable. And again, a tweak of the settings would grab you a little more performance. That aside, the 2080 Ti still packs 23% more frames at 1080p and a larger 27% more at 1440p. Again, due to that memory setup just being, well, better in general. So where to start? Well, I guess the main thing will be that the 2080 Ti absolutely destroyed the 4060. And while you could argue, though both ways, that the 4060 won the battle in Microsoft Flight Sim, due to the CPU bottleneck and margin of error variants, I don't think you can even give that to the newer Ada Lovelace based GPU. And with that being said, that means that the older and cheaper, albeit by $7, for a used version 2080 Ti beat the newer 4060 in every single test. Yeah. Looking at the bigger picture, on average, the 2080 Ti was actually 25% faster than the RTX 4060 at 1080p, with some pretty big gains in various games, with upwards of 47% in the likes of Hogwarts Legacy, and an even larger 66% when moving up to 1440p. Even the likes of Spider-Man helped to increase this overall average, with the 2080 Ti coming in a monstrous 59% faster, again at 1440p meaning that the overall average saw the Turing GPU 34% faster on average at the larger resolution. Now, I said it before, but I think it's clear to see that some titles could still see the 2080 Ti holding its own at 4K, while the 4060 will just slip away due to that memory configuration of 128-bit bus and only 8GB of VRAM. Now, knowing that not everyone is sold on ray tracing, when we take out the results for that, the margins don't really change much, with the 2080 Ti coming in 24% faster at 1080p and 35% faster at 1440p. So both cards actually scale quite well when ray tracing is enabled, and there's no real big uplift from the newer card with newer generation of RT cores, but of course, less of them in comparison. Now, I do want to have some transparency here because the 4060 Ti is still a 60 series card, while the 2080 Ti was always higher up in the stack, but it's hard to ignore the price point that the 2080 Ti now sits at, and if you don't mind buying a used card, well, it's definitely a better proposition. That's clear to see when we look at the cost per frame and the typical selling price. The 4060 is still selling for its MSRP of 299, while the 2080 Ti, as mentioned earlier, can be had on average for around $293, when we sampled about 20 completed listings on eBay. Some were higher, some were lower. So if you are actually able to get one for even less, the argument for getting it over the 4060 is just going to increase even more. When looking at 1080p and the cost per frame, the 2080 Ti does come in a significant 21% cheaper per frame, and the 2080 Ti actually beats everything on our chart in terms of the overall average, even going all the way up to the 4060 Ti and 6800 from AMD's last generation, which is pretty impressive and shows that the Turing GPU has aged well, especially now that the cost has dropped so much. That's pretty clear to see as 2080 Ti's used to sell for around double the price they are now in 2020 to 2021 when the whole GPU crisis was going on, and that was for a used card on eBay. Now as we move up to 1440p, the cost per frame argument gets even better for the 2080 Ti, which is now 28% cheaper per frame, though the likes of the 2080 Super, RX 6600, GTX 1080 and RTX 2070 all come in with better value. And my pick of the bunch here really would be the RTX 2070, which is only 5% slower than the RTX 2080 Ti, but comes in 45% cheaper, with the only real issue being the 8GB of VRAM that it has compared to the 11GB on the 2080 Ti, which, as we've seen, could cause some issues, especially as newer games come out that struggle with having less than, say, 10 or 11GB of VRAM. Now, for the RTX 4060, it really needs to have a price cut. And based on this, it needs to be quite sizable, as even AMD's RX 7600, which we've made clear isn't exactly great in terms of value for money, when it gets trumped by the 6700 from last generation, and the fact that that's even cheaper. 
Now, while I know not everyone is going to be comfortable with buying a used GPU from yesteryear, it's hard to deny the performance that is pushed out, especially compared to something that is the newest card on the market. Because the only areas that it really has a fighting chance is in DLSS3 with frame generation, which again is another technology that just not everyone is sold on. And of course there is power and efficiency, which the 4060 has a TDP of 115 watts, while the 2080 Ti is at 250 watts. So there's definitely an argument there. Though in this day and age, I think the huge performance uplift on this card more than makes up for some savings in electricity, especially if you can get the card even cheaper than what we've kind of averaged it out to be. For me, and kind of looking at the data, which doesn't lie, it's pretty clear to see that the 4060 Ti 8 gig, which is currently priced at 399, needs to have a price cut of around $100, bringing it to the price of the 4060. While that should see about the same, bringing it closer to the $200 mark, because performance on the Ti when looking at the averages is only 4% behind that of the 2080 Ti. So you could argue for $7 more, you're only losing 4%, but still getting something newer with better features, more efficiency and all that. Sadly, I can't see Nvidia doing that anytime soon, unless AMD's new and upcoming 7700 and 7800 series GPUs come in with such an aggressive price point that Nvidia have their hand forced to do so. Which again, yeah, is very unlikely to happen because that's not how the world kind of works, sadly. What is, I guess, the most evident from this big test is that GPUs haven't really come along as fast as what we thought. And that's down to a variety of reasons, including the cost of manufacturing, greed and profits, and just much more. And that's definitely, I don't know, maybe a topic for another video. For now, that's about it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do and want to get even more content, then consider joining the exclusive Patreon club, where you get access to a whole metric ton of goodies, including behind the scenes content, a super special area on our Discord, monthly live streams, bi-weekly game nights, and so much more. The link for all that great stuff is down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.